What's happening, everybody? It's Wednesday. We're going to get into the buy or sell. It's a fun game for everyone to play, even at home. Break down the news, the Thursday night matchup, and of course, we're highlighting the mailbag, those Foot Clan questions, getting them answered today. Check it out. Hey, you beautiful party people, you. There are two weeks left, only two weeks remaining to get in on the Foot Clan giveaway at footclangiveaway.com. Have you already visited? Have you already supported the show? Head over there because we got a brand new entry to get some more points for this giveaway by nominating us for the Digital Hollywood Podcast Awards. And look, there's only one way I can make my parents proud of me, Jason. Yeah, I know. I know. They, I got to get those you podcasts. You have towards. to get the awards or they don't love you. They shame me. They say you are a, an absolute failure. So... Help make my parents proud of me. FootClanGiveaway.com. Bunch of real, real fast, real easy ways to enter. And that grand prize, of course, is the signed Saquon Barkley jersey. So get in on it. Two weeks left. FootClanGiveaway.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from PristineAuction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. This is the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I am your host for the day, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by my bestest fantasy pal in the whole wide world, Jason Moore. I am your only analyst for the day. Take that, Jake Grizz. <laughs> Careful. You poke the bear, you might get eaten. Never insult the cardboard bear extraordinaire, whose Twitter apparently blew, <laughs> blew up yesterday, as it should. It's an excellent follow. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about some fantasy football today. I hope everyone's okay with that. Yeah, that, I think that's a good topic for the Wednesday show, is fantasy football. <laughs> it's a good topic for all of the shows. It's Wednesday, so we will be getting to, into the buy or sell. But before we do that, I want to remind you, you can follow us on the YouTube. See these beautiful faces. See this beautiful bear. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Thank you, Owl Borland for making it appear that the Cardboard Bear is actually talking. You are welcome. Very, very nice. And follow us on Instagram. We're trying to boost those IG numbers, ladies and gentlemen. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And if you want a personal sneak peek at what the three of us are doing, our Instagram handles are at FFHitman. That is yours truly. At JasonFFL. That needs, is yours truly. Who needs to up his IG game, honestly. Yeah. I, you know, I do... I have a hard time with that because I feel like because of the medium having to be like photographs, I don't know. I just always feel so vain. Look at this graph. Look at this graph. <laughs> Jason, the people want to see what you're up to. I know, but I feel I feel weird. I'll get better. I'll get better, Foot Clan, if, if you give me the follow. That's true. Hey, if you want to see what Andy is up to right now, at Andy Holloway, also on the IG, check him out. All of our rankings, they are up for week seven, including the start sit tool, the fantasyfootballers.com. Let's get into some buy or sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Now, Jay, before we get into this week's buy or sell, I thought we should go over what happened last week. I'll bet you do want to go so over last, last week, week last week we had the AFC North edition we had James Conner 75 total yards buy or sell Jason I bought I as did I and we were correct Juju 75 receiving yards we both sold that is correct oh we got it right Joe Mixon tops 100 total yards for the second straight week you and I sold that one Andy bought it our score Mm, mighty nice. Odell Beckham will beat his combined receiving stats. <laughs> this is so fart smelly. It is. I'm loving it. Yeah. Loving every minute of it. OBJ will beat his combined receiving stats from week four and five. He ended up with 6 4 101, which makes you and I. Uh huh. But now then, here's, here's where things were different. Yeah. Mark Andrews returns to the top five at tight end. I bought. 
You sold. I sold, and I... Five for five. I, I disagree. I think I won that one. The, the numbers say no. Yeah, I, I, I would like to hear your justification. My justification is that he was a top five startable tight end. Ricky Seals-Jones and Cameron Brait were in the top five, pushing him to number seven. Nobody's starting. The <laughs> yes. Thank you. We're all winners here. All right. Let's get to this week's buy or sell. All right. We're going with the AFC South edition. DeAndre Hopkins. Who oh boy. Who oh boy. Will he be a top 10 wide receiver this week against the Indianapolis Colts? Just for review, his finishes, wide receiver 5, 57, 41, 16, 19, 21, a little bit better the past two weeks. Been around the, the wide receiver 20, usually a guy that is in the top 10, and by usually I mean career-wise, not this season. Uh, I'll let uh, I'll let you kick it off. You, since you're the winner, you should answer these first, Mike. I have no problem doing that, and I'm going to... Sell. As am I. You don't, you know, look, when a guy has not even been in the top 15 for the last five weeks, it's hard to say, okay, this is the week he's top 10. Uh, you know, if this was a matchup against Kansas City, sure. something like that, you might do, which he has already had and still failed to get top 10. Obviously, it is in his range of outcomes to be a top 10 wide receiver yeah, you're going to could do it you're going to start him yes. still like a top 10 wide receiver but if you have to bet on the outcome it's difficult to say that a guy who's you know been averaging like the wide receiver 30 something since week one that he's going to be top 10 so we're both selling marlon mack on the other side of that ball will he hit the 75 rushing yard mark houston is allowing 73 rushing yards per game they are beatable Marla Mack has been on fire, and I am going to buy this. I don't like at all that we are in agreement as so much this week as we were <laughs> last week. I want to destroy you, but I'm buying it as well. The, the rushing game has been outstanding, uh, just absolutely unbelievable for the Colts, for Marla Mack, and while Houston's defense, you think of it as, you know, J.J. Watt. And right. they, they lost Clowney, who was – Great in the run game. I, I think Marlon Mack top 75. Now, this one, I want to alter it. Okay. Because what was uh, suggested here, um, I believe that our good friend Judge Giamatti Brooks, who is currently out of the office, he put Gardner Minshew top 10. It could have been Kyle who put this in here. I'm not 100% sure, but Gardner Minshew is a top 10 quarterback. I think that's too easy for us to sell. Right. So, but but what's your line? Are you going top twelve? This is a matchup against Cincinnati, and since he's had finishes already of thirteen, fifteen, fifteen, eight. So, top I've, twelve to me. I'll seems set like the a line at top twelve. So he's a quarterback one because I will buy it. Okay. Cincinnati is a, already a fantastic, a delicious matchup for Gardner Minshew. Then you throw in the fact that they are struggling health wise. With their secondary, I, I am. In fact, I regret Gardner Minshew should have been mentioned in the streaming quarterback section of yesterday's show. Let's say you're looking to stream and the uh, the waiver wire got got uh, stripped clean. I think Gardner's in play for you. I'm I'm going to buy that he's a top twelve guy this week. This is our first disagreement. I will sell. Uh, he certainly has the capability. Obviously, we've seen him as a top 12 already, and the matchup is uh, very good as well. But Give this, me all the DJ Chark this week. Sure. Do, uh, do, I mean, do, do. Th and that's how he's going to be a top 12 guy is, is, a, is a nice DJ Chark bomb, which could easily happen. But you could also have the game script where Leonard Fournette is crushing. They're up. They don't need much, and they rely – more on the running game, and he's just um, uh, you know quarterback fifteen sixteen, which is what that's, we've seen. That's a been lot. his home, and that's I I don't believe Gardner Minshew is a great quarterback. I, I think he's good. Sure, he's good. He's he's very surprising and good for being a first uh, you know a a first year sixth round rookie. Shockingly good, but but then when you take that you know uh, barometer away and you just say stack him up against the other quarterbacks, you know. He's, he's performed admirably, but I don't think he's a great quarterback. All right, we got Derrick Henry, 100 rushing yards versus the Chargers. The Chargers are allowing 109 rushing yards per, per game. game. They suck 
at you, stopping the run. Would you like to go first or second? I would like to go first. Um, I'm going to sell. I am going to say he does not hit the 100 yards rushing. Interesting. This is clearly a matchup where he could. He should. But if you look at how Henry does, I mean, this could be a matchup where he goes out and gets 212 yards rushing. Henry has hit the 100-yard mark once, and he hit it exactly. At 100. One time this season. Last season where he had a, a, you know, a, a great top finish, do you know how many times he hit it last year? Twice in 16 games, he only hit 100 yards twice. This is why I'm selling. I hate that I have made my complete argument um, before you. But sell. I'm buying. But, oh, nice. I am buying. This is the type of matchup for Derrick Henry where if it's a porous run defense, he beats you with a few chunk plays. Yes. Like, a lot of the time, he's just going to be stuffed and nothing's going to happen. But I think this is the, the type of defense he'll rip off. You know, at least a handful. Two, I'll go two, like twenty plus yard runs, and that'll get him to the hundred yard mark. And last one, Darren Fells, five receptions. I am selling. Darren Fells, five receptions. I am selling this. I think that number is too high for a tight end. He's he's been utilized. He's a guy that, uh, you know, I think he's a top twelve tight end right now. That's not saying much. Um, so I'm going to sell. I am also going to sell. Now, Owl Borland wants us to bring up Jason. We have DeAndre Hopkins ranked yes. in the top five, and we're selling him as a top ten wide receiver. So just run through that a little bit so people understand where we're at. Sure. So when you are – and this is a great question, right? You, uh, you're you saying, well, why do you rank him there if you're now saying he's not going to finish there? Everything in fantasy is probability, is odds, and you're comparing them against other players. So, for instance, right now – You've got DeAndre Hopkins, Cooper Cup, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Tyreek Hill, these big star names at the top. And the reason that you end up doing that when you make rankings is because this is who you're going to start. And even though DeAndre Hopkins could end up finishing, and we're saying he might and probably will end up finishing below top 10, there aren't people that I'm necessarily going to start that way. We I just brought up, right, Cameron Brake. And uh, who was the other tight end that was Ricky Seals? Ricky Jones. Seals Jones. They were top five. I'm not going to rank people that could be there. I'm going to rank based on probability, odds, history, all of that. Should DeAndre Hopkins be a top ten wide receiver this week? Yes, he should. Yes. He's great. He's talented. He's done it a million times before. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to. So th that's that's where the issue comes in. You know, it, it's like. Um, I look at people behind uh, Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks was almost the guy I went with for my start of the week. Great matchup against Atlanta. Could absolutely finish as a top five guy way ahead of Hopkins pushing him down. But you've just got to go based on probability, odds. Brandon Cooks hasn't been uh, you know, outstanding. Jared Goff hasn't been. So there's there's a lot of things that go into rankings more than just – it. you know, that's why like a lot of times people – um, have the questions, and we've got to start sit tool. Mm -hmm. But it's not just this linear uh, ranking where because one guy is ahead of another, you always start that player over the other. Context of the team, your matchup, all those things matter. Absolutely. So that was Buy or Sell presented by Pristine Auction, our good friends, our studio sponsor, the best sports memorabilia website of all time. Of all, The Big Bang happened. Mm -hmm. The universe was created. Mm -hmm. and Pristine Auction has still managed to be the best sports memorabilia website where we get all our signed gear. Like right now, we got Kenny Galladay. Oh, Kenny Galladay, is, he has impressed me very much. But anyways, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. You're going to get 5 bucks for your first victory, your first auction victory. Jason, are you ready to talk about the news? Excited to talk about the news. <laughs> okay. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. The NFL media, they are reporting Alvin Kamara is dealing with a, quote, a high ankle type issue now, that will limit him in practice. High ankle sprains are a multi-week. They are no good. A mul that, I mean, that is what Saquon has, right? And he's obviously missed several games even though he shed his boot. This is weird because they're not calling it a high ankle sprain. This is like, this is high ankle sprainish. 
This is like ish highish. I don't know what that means. They're saying there's a legit shot that he plays. However, you also have to look at what the team does. Early in the week, they brought in Travaris Cadet to work out a player who's been in that system before. Right. If they're bringing in other running backs for, quote, depth, that means they're worried they need the depth. You don't, right. you know, if, if all your running backs are healthy and good and you're, you've played for three weeks in a row, you don't just bring in running backs to be like, yeah, I just, I want to add depth for no reason. So I think there is a chance Kamara doesn't suit up. And if that's the case, Latavius Murray becomes a, a really good fantasy option. I, I, I think the list ends there, though. The Ian Rappaport is reporting Ryan Tannehill will start week seven against the Chargers instead of Marcus Mariota for the Tennessee Titans. This has been kind of that under under bubbling fear if you were on Team Mariota when they traded for Ryan Tannehill. When you trade for a backup of that caliber and then renegotiate his contract, this is something that could happen if you're not playing well, which Mariota has not been playing well for several years now. <clears throat> How are you feeling about Ryan Tannehill being the captain for the Titans? I feel identical to how I feel about Marcus Mariota being the captain mm, really? for the Titans. To me, they are comps <laughs> of one another. They are both uh, middle to low tier quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, you know, they're you know Ryan, Ryan Tannehill is better than your your average backup, and very well might be better than Marcus Mariota. But I don't think it matters. Because that offensive line has been such trash that I think if you if you put a, a good quarterback behind that offensive line, they're going to struggle this week specifically. It's a difficult passing matchup. That's why you bought on Derrick yeah, Henry's I'm in on, on Henry. running game. They're, go, they're clearly going to be on team established to run this week. It's a bad rushing defense, a great passing defense. So I, it doesn't, uh, doesn't change absolutely one thing for me other than – in my rankings, the name Marcus Mariota turns into Ryan Tannehill. Okay, I got you. In a what seemed like a bizarre move yesterday, in the middle of the day, it was reported that the Rams were trading Marcus Peters to the Ravens. After losing Aqib Tlaib, their other cornerback to IR. So they said, we don't need any starting cornerbacks. However, then their real move came. The big splash happened. Jalen Ramsey, superstar cornerback, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He has been traded to the Rams. For a 2020 first, a 2021 first, and a 2021 fourth round pick. A mighty price for a cornerback who will be looking for a new contract sooner than later. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that the back injury that has kept Jalen uh, uh, Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey out for the last couple weeks is going to heal quickly. <laughs> and he he's gonna he's gonna be just fine. That is, look, they. I mean, kudos to the Jags because they said they're not trading him unless they get an offer like this, and they didn't. And he wasn't even playing, and they, that didn't force their hand. Um, and also, kudos to the Rams. I think this is a good move for both teams. They're they're not. This is a team that's playing for this year. Um, they also went out and traded for a center from the really I, I think he's going to move to guard play guard uh from the Browns he was the number 33 pick in last year's draft is already he's been a backup for the Browns so he's already yeah, known wild. as a bust um but they have to, he's probably going to come in and start because they they uh they lost another guard this week Chris Thompson has been diagnosed with turf toe that guy just cannot stay healthy unfortunately Deshaun Jackson didn't practice but Head coach Doug Peterson has said he does not practice in order to play. Another benching has occurred. This one's in Miami. The Dolphins say that Ryan Fitzpatrick will now be the signal caller after last week officially declaring that Josh Rosen will start for the rest of the season. This actually Then changes. they benched Josh Rosen in the middle of the game and said, no, Rosen's still the quarterback, but here we are. It's Fitz magic season again. Yeah, uh, look, this, this to me changes things I'm not sure it changes it to the degree where it matters because it's still the Dolphins you're still uh, talking about just terrible options like Devontae Parker but Devontae and, and the matchup this week is it makes everyone irrelevant right like they're they're playing Buffalo right so no I'm out but if he keeps that job if, if Fitzmagic keeps the job 
this will sound a little gross, but I, I actually think Devontae Parker and or Preston <laughs> Williams, but Devontae Parker first – is maybe a startable fantasy option. You look at the air yards, kind of, you know, the thing that this last week we were talking about, Curtis Samuel looks like he's primed for a breakout. The week before, Will Fuller primed for a breakout. That's kind of where Devontae Parker's been at. And actually, the last two games, whether you know it or not, he's been a top 24 wide receiver. Devontae Parker has either scored or hit 50-plus yards in four of five matchups. So, But not against Buffalo this week. Correct. I mean, he was absolutely shut out against New England. And against Buffalo. Because, here's the thing. Because it's Buffalo, it'll pro they'll probably have to go back to Josh Rosen for the next <laughs> week. Fitz isn't going to look that great. And Emmanuel Sanders, where he left last week with an injury, there was news of optimism, followed by an upgraded to full practice. He just so, needed one night of rest as Wolverine to fully heal. <laughs> this guy. He is amazing. This is why, this, you know, I've said for the last, I think, three or four years when we're asked, who's your favorite player to watch? This is why I say Sanders, because he plays like he doesn't care about injury. He's so tough. Because he doesn't have to. Because he doesn't have to. Yeah. He just heals immediately. And, and he's a smaller guy. He's just such a technical tactician that plays fearlessly. I, I love Manny Sanders. It's Wednesday, so that means your waivers have run. Reminder to drop it like it's hot. Go see what players were dropped because it happens, man. It happens that this fantasy players tilt and they drop players that they should not be dropping. This is how we got uh, Hunter Henry. That is exactly it, how we got him in the league. One, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful fantasy news like the Ryan Fitzpatrick news. That, th that, came, through, that came through this morning. Yeah, right? Hey, we're going to get to all of your questions, help your fantasy teams out. Before that, want to thank our today's sponsor, Roman. I mean, look, I understand losing your hair. It can be, uh, it can be <laughs> devastating. It doesn't feel the best. But, you know, when it happens, a lot of times you think, okay, I'm done. This is it. Uh, it's over. It only gets worse. But there is a actual FDA-approved over-the-counter and prescription options available to you through Roman. You could get connected with a U.S. licensed physician for a free online evaluation, see if treatment options are right for you. If the doctor decides that it's good for you, they're going to deliver it to your door in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. Go to GetRoman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit. If you want to stop or prevent hair loss, starting treatment early is key with Roman. Roman gets members started for free with a free uh, two-day shipping. Go to GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. Once again, GetRoman.com slash footballers. We would like to thank Untuck It for sponsoring today's show. Have you ever wondered why traditional button-ups look so long and so baggy? I have. Yeah, because I don't want to tuck in. Like, I wear... I have spent my life yeah. wearing the, the button-up shirts and you untucked, yeah. and I look like a baggy mess. It's because they were not designed to be worn that way, Jason. But Untuck It has solved this problem. It's the, un the original untucked shirt. It's a modern solution to an old problem with no tucking or tailoring required. No matter your size or shape, these shirts are the perfect untucked length. That is not a joke. They have more than 50 combinations are tall, short, slim, athletic, whatever your build is, Untuck It has a solution for you. We all have Untuck mm -hmm. It shirts. When I need to clean this mess up, I throw on my Untuck It because I'm like you, Jay. I'm not tucking in. It's not happening. Mm -mm. Look, I'm, I'm, st I'm trying to clean it up. I'm not in school anymore. But I'm still rock and roll enough that I got to keep my shirt untucked, keep it tight, keep it right. And, uh, and Untuck It does the job. Their, their shirts, are, shirts are sensational. They're always high fashion, very modern. You Right now, you can try one on in person at one of Untuck It's 50 stores or go to untuckit.com to get started. They offer free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. And right now, you can save 20% on your first order by using our code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's U-N-T-U-C-K-I-T.com, promo code Footballers. All right, Jason, are your pipes warmed up? <clears throat> oh, is this me? I got I got to put you on the spot. Oh, man, I just want to say thank you, and I apologize to the listeners. Let's do this. <laughs> may 
Mailbag. Mailbag! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Jason Moore edition! Very, very nice. And before we get into the the mailbag, there's just one thing I have to bring up. Waivers have run. My dynasty team, Jason. Oh, no. Cold oh! Bloody. I paid out the notes. Did you? Well, yeah, because it's dynasty and there's very few guys to pick up. That's another tip. If you're in a dynasty league, don't be frugal with your... And I was not, and the person who I thought I was bidding against didn't even put a bid in. Al, Al Borland. Borland as the Packers? Shame team? on you. Did you forget? I did. Oh. I, I went in to do it, and I couldn't decide who I wanted to drop, so I meant to go back. You could drop anyone I on your team. I I've know. seen your roster. Thanks. Uh, yeah, that was a huge mistake. Oh, well, the well I'll let you know. You would not have gotten him because I looked at how much money you had left, and I bid that amount. Well done. Oh. The Lazard right. King. I spent sixty-seven dollars on him. Oh, on Alan <laughs> Lazard. What a world. Oh, hopefully he becomes something. Into the mailbag to answer those foot clan questions. You can submit a question at the fantasyfootballers.com. Click submit a question. Or our voicemail hotline is available at 302 464 TFFB. Speaking of voicemails. We're going to get into one of those first. Hey, Ballers. This is Laura. I was one of those people who struggled with Jared Gurf last <laughs> week. I lost by two points as he got me negative point five. My question is, do I start him against the Falcons D this week, or do you think I should hold on to my grudge? Thanks, guys. Love the show. And Brooks. Oh, and oh, Brooks. Oh, she loves very, Brooks. Very nice. Very nice. Look, I am a grudge holder. I wear the grudge like a crown, me and Maynard. But I'm playing Jared Goff this week. So absolutely against the Falcons. I totally understand those who want to rage bench, want to rage drop him. I I totally understand. But fantasy football is a game of matchups, and this is as juicy as they come. The matchup is so good. Look, he's inside, he's in a dome. I just talked about I almost made uh, Brandon Cooks is is one of those guys. I, I I didn't use him as my start of the week because I'm terrified of another collapse. Um, but the matchup is is perfect for a big blow up game here. My worry is this offensive line. Uh, Austin Corbett bust you know second year player coming into a team not knowing anything about their scheme and their offensive line system and all that jazz. Maybe being thrust into a starting role is not good for Goff. And Goff is a great quarterback for the system that can protect him. When he gets pressure, oh boy, it is not as pretty. Now, I don't know if the Falcons' D-line, still trying to rely on Vic Beasley of yesteryear, can actually pressure him. So this could be a great matchup. Mike, I know you believe in Goff a little bit more yes. than I do. I think the answer here is dependent upon your options, right? Sure, but okay, so passing yards allowed. This is recent history for the Atlanta Falcons. 340 to the Cardinals, 426 to the Texans, the Titans, the Titans, 227, the Colts, 300. You can throw on this team. Keanu Neal is out, and that has transformed this defense, not in a positive way, Look, but they. Uh, I want my quarterbacks against the Falcons. Look, I totally get it. I have a roster where I have Goff and I have Wentz. Now, my this is a perfect example of what we were talking about earlier. My rankings, because I'm trusting the process of what you just described, I've got Goff ahead of Wentz. But as the fantasy owner, I have such a hard time putting Goff in because of yeah, I get it. You know, the one and a half point that, that I got last week. So let me ask you this. Here's a guy that's close in rankings this week. We like him, but he's not – he doesn't have the – you know, it's it's not the same – you know, he's he's down in the rankings. But would you start Josh Allen against Miami over Goff? Ooh. That's, that's one of those like – That's very close. Currently, my rankings have Josh Allen just a couple spots behind him. Right. That's what I'm saying. He's behind, but – if you want think, that gut check of not having to worry about the possible golf implosion, 
I think that Allen's Allen might be a tiny bit safer, but the the concern for Josh Allen, if you want to build that case, is Miami won't be able to score. Right. Like, they will not be able to score against Buffalo. I believe I saw the implied team total for Miami. It was eleven points. That's yuck. And honestly, I don't, I don't know, know how they, how they get he, that. Yeah, I don't know how they get there either. <clears throat> Meanwhile, uh, on the Falcons side, Matt Ryan is on one of the longest streaks of three hundred plus passing yards in all of all time because Matt Ryan's really good, and you can score on the Rams. I know they just got their big acquisition of Jalen Ramsey, but. I expect that the Falcons can keep up. So that's why I have Jared Goff ranked a little bit higher. This one's from the website. Eric wants to know Hunter Henry or Darren Waller rest of season. Darren, I am the Wallerist. Oh, goo 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 We all love Darren Waller so, so very much against or, uh, around the office. But do we love him more than Hunter Henry in a PPR? The way that I see these two players is I see that – Darren Waller's floor is safer than Hunter Henry's. I believe okay. that because even though you saw the one game where he comes out and Hunter Henry was like the go-to target, that's going to flip. It's going to be Keenan Allen most of the time. He's going to be the go-to target and and not Hunter Henry. This was a, a matchup thing. But Hunter Henry's ceiling is much higher, as we saw this last week, because the offense is better. The quarterback is better. I you know I expect far more touchdowns for the Chargers than I do for the Raiders. And so Waller is the safe weekly every play. Hunter Henry is safe enough where I would prefer to have the ceiling of Hunter Henry and those big breakout games. We have this problem in League One. We have Darren Waller and we have Hunter Henry. Yeah, we do. I'm fine trading either and starting either, but I would take Hunter Henry rest of season. So if it came down to you have to trade one of these players and you prefer Hunter Henry, is it enough of a preference that you would not trade him, as in depending on your return? No, I think right now, if you're talking this week, I'm trading him now. You're probably going to get more for Hunter Henry because he came and back. so you would be willing to move him and yes, just stick I'd with be Waller? Will, yeah, because the gap is not large between those two players. I love both of them going forward. If you can get more for either one of those tight ends, I'm fine trading either. This one's from Twitter, Jason. Georgia Rob 13 says... I'm one in five. Should I just give up? Never! <laughs> Never, Never give, give up. up. Never, Never surrender. surrender. I love, I love Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. All right. Um, <laughs> no, you. Know, so here's the thing about... <gasps> yes. He wanted in on that. He got it. You love Michael <laughs> Keaton too, huh? Yeah. Um, Who doesn't? Yeah, seriously. National treasure. If you don't like... Like, genuinely. If someone else is... Oh, I hate Michael Keaton. That's a weird thing. That's, that's a weird hate. That's just a mean person. That's that's being contrarian just to yeah. be contrarian. But back to the question. So you're one in five. Here's the thing that I know from my experience. We've done this show forever. We hear every year people who are one in five, oh and five. They came back. They got in the playoffs. They won the championship. But here's why. There's two reasons. One, I've never been in a league with perfect parity ever in my life. There are good teams in every league and bad teams in every league. If you're one in five, the schedule says you've probably – played more of the good teams while those other teams with good schedules have played more of the bad teams. The way scheduling works in a 16-week season is it's going to flip for you. You're going to win. Other people are going to lose. That's one half of it. The other half is that the other teams that have a worse record, maybe they played good teams too, but they're going to start giving up. They're going to start quitting. The people that don't quit keep winning. So, I, you know, I just always play for this year, no you, matter your record, in, unless you're, like, at the trade deadline and you're out of the playoffs and you're in a keeper, then then there are reasons to sure. help your team's future. You could be 8-5. and five. Yes. Just saying. Just saying. That's in the range of outcomes. Uh, this is from Twitter from Gurgurvery. Nailed it. <laughs> It's at G. Oh, I see it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I did that's it. That's exactly right. I just lost Will Disley. Oh, poor one out for Big Montana. 12-team league. Chase, this is insanity of where we are today. Oh, my goodness. Would you trade the Pats defense and Mike Williams for George Kittle? Oh. So I assume that this trade has been talked about, negotiated. It's too specific. And they are... Ready to do it. This is but, on the table. But the person with the 
Pat's defense isn't sure they should make the move. It's unbelievable. And here's why they're not sure. Because they've had the Pat's defense. They have won every single week. We always you say You can leave the tight end spot blank right, you, when we, you have the Pat's defense right now. We always say that when you get 20 plus points from your defense, it's usually a guaranteed win. That's right. not you, know, you can lose with that. But when you get so many points from a position that doesn't usually score a lot, you know, those multi-touchdown defensive games, it's really difficult to lose with the rest of your roster. So you've been winning. That being said, and I know the playoff schedule is good. Yes. You can win with streaming defenses. Not everybody out there is going to uh, have the, you know, the Patriots, and so they automatically win the championship. Tight ends are much more difficult to come by, and the schedule, while it is still mighty fine for the Patriots, it's not as easy. So the next couple weeks, easy. Then they come up with a, a rougher spot that I don't expect them to just be d as dominant as they've been. I would much rather have the top three tight end in George Kittle. So I would, I would do the deal. I completely agree. This one is from at Glass Jaw Diaries. What should I do with Joe Mixon? Is he even worth trading to someone, or should I just drop him? Oh, oh! You can, you cannot, should I, not, do not, will not drop in a tree. <laughs> will not drop from my knees. No, you don't drop Joe Mixon. <laughs> that was the rhyme. Yeah, I think it was excellent. Can I, can we get a ruling? You from went the, from a singular to a plural, though. It still rhyme. It was it, terrible. Oh come on! I'm out of here. This is a solo show from here on out. Oh. All right. Well, we the checked computer, the machine. Yeah, the machine's never wrong. <laughs> um, there was a question here. It was about Joe Mixon. Just I, we're not dropping Joe Mixon. Look, that's that's not happening. Are you trying to trade him with this low value that he currently has? Are you riding it out? Where just he, what's happening for Joe Mixon? Are there better days ahead? Are I, there worse days ahead? Well, I don't think that's possible, but. <laughs> I, I think there are better days ahead for Joe Mixon, but we've talked about him being an official level down player. There, what you, the hope that you drafted is not ahead. The hope of the the top twelve running back on a weekly basis that's that's not ahead. Here's one thing that we've seen though from years and years and years of of doing this and and playing in fantasy football. When people try to buy low, Joe Mixon is a buy low candidate. Not everybody understands what that means. They think oh, I can trade for him because he's bad. And so they do. Because he's been bad, they trade for him and they, quote, buy low in their own mind. But what they've actually done is just paid for Joe Mixon. And, and now they're actually able to get him and that's what they're seeing as like, oh, I can scoop him up, as opposed to what a true buy low is, which is get him for next to nothing. So Joe Mixon is a guy you should be shopping because there, there's probably one person in your league that's running back needy, that is willing to still pay a premium for Joe Mixon, um, but I, I'm not going to trade him at this low of a value, meaning a true buy low. I'm not going to sell him there because I do think that he's at his bottom. All right. Speaking of another buy low question, this one is off the Instagram. It's from Sh uh, Sean Patchell. Wants to know, is Keenan Allen a buy low candidate? Oh, heck yeah. Oh heck yeah! All right, you're you're still in on Keenan Allen. One hundred percent. Keenan Allen does this. We, we I went back uh, this morning and looked at the 2018 consistency chart, and everything he does, he does in stretches. Started the year with a bad three games in a row, and you're like, oh no, this is right. He's not the guy we draft. I then, remember a few years ago when Keenan Allen was like, you were in the car, you pulled up, you were on the freeway. There's nothing around you. You stopped, you opened the door, and you kicked Keenan Allen out. Oh, yeah. And said, good luck, buster. You are the worst. You are dead to me. I'll let the vultures get you. And then he went and hopped in that Lexus. <laughs> he, he hitchhiked. He hitchhiked. <laughs> in a, yeah, I mean, in a Bentley and said, I'm the wide receiver one for the rest of the season. So, I mean, last year he had a terrible stretch of three games. Uh, in a bye week and whatnot, he had a great stretch of five games in a row. Just do, 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 do. Then three bad games. I don't know why the history with him and Rivers is on again, off again, but he is too good of a wide receiver 
too highly targeted through the course of a season. I want the highs of Keenan Allen. I will accept the lulls. And because you've had quite a few games in a row, I think the change is coming here pretty soon. It's weird. It's a, it is a very strange thing. But it's almost like this offense lost its groove once Melvin Gordon came back. Uh, I know my, my comment was not like hilarious. So it was what are not you as laughing funny at? as what I was laughing at. I'm looking through our questions. As, um, here's, here's one. All right. I read the question first, and then it got better because it comes in uh, from Twitter from at your mama. <laughs> Wait, there's no way that's a real it's, handle. It's not. This is purely a troll. I don't know if it was a troll by one of our producers, um, but he said, would you trade Duke Johnson and Cooper Cup <laughs> To a complete idiot for Scary Terry <laughs> and Lev Bell. Yeah, I would much rather have the Scary Terry and Lev Bell side of that. If you don't know what we're talking about, uh, good. <laughs> yes, yes, that is correct. Um, but yeah, thanks, your mama. Uh, so, Oh, that's your mama, you are correct. Never let guess, someone forget. Guess who I play this week? <laughs> In no. the listener league, yes. No. Captain Sink, who took advantage of me on my toilet time, now gets to he's he's like already a ninety percent odds on favorite to win. This is preposterous, Jason. All right, we're gonna we got another voicemail question. Let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Dennis from Cleveland. Love the show. Just wondering in a full point PPR, I was offered Chris Godwin for Keenan Allen. I turned it down. Last week, did I mess up? Love the show. Have a good one. Chris Godwin is very, very difficult to gauge right now because he is. I think he has one flop of a game, if I'm remembering that correctly off the top of my head. Keenan Allen, of course, has a few. But what what I mean by it's hard to gauge his value is he was the hotness. The, right. This offseason, if you were still involved in fantasy football – Everyone had the sweats to draft Chris Godwin. Now, it cooled down a little bit towards the end, uh, getting into draft season. But for the most part, everyone's very hot and bothered for the breakout that was coming for Chris Godwin. Everything was there from you could see it happening last year. You bring in Bruce Arians, and Chris Godwin has produced. What, I, what I'm saying is difficult is we're not that far into the 2019 season. Is it fair to say that Chris Godwin is that level up to like this is fully the truth. This is what you should expect now from this offense with Chris Godwin is he is he's a top eight guy. Yes. I, I think I think he and, I think he and value and treat him that way. Yeah, I think you have to. Now he's not going to right now he's the number one wide receiver. I don't think he's going to stay as touchdown uh successful as touchdown lucky whatever we, whatever words we want to try to mush together no no i like touchdown lucky yeah i don't think he's gonna uh he's so lucky he got a touchdown he's a star um he's, i was going Brittany, jason and you've ruined it i apologize for nothing um look both godwin this is this is a surprising stat chris godwin and mike evans have the same exact number of targets on the season they both have Oh, no. Yes. 55! Oh! oh! They both have 55 targets. They are the only two uh, wide receivers in the NFL with 55 targets. Now, that is a that is four fewer than Keenan Allen at 59. Um, but I think that what – so you, you look at Mike Evans, you're super disappointed. You look at Chris Godwin, you're unbelievably happy with the season so far this year. He's been in the top eight wide receivers four of the six weeks. But the – the system of Bruce Arians and the utilization of the slot receiver is so consistent. That's what I want. I, you know, I want the consistency of the targets to be high quality near the goal line. Uh, you know, and so I think here this is a fair trade. Both of these guys have the potential to outdo the other on any given week. But Godwin's consistency, I think, is going to be greater than Keenan Allen's. All right. and so I would rather have Chris Godwin. I I don't blame you. I'm glad we could break. Are you that the other down. way? No, I that I think I'm Chris Godwin, man. I'm trying not to let recency bias. I know. In fact, that's 
it's so difficult to weigh recency bias with this is just now how things are. Cooper Cup is the perfect example of the emotional recency bias. If you're out there last week, you would have traded anyone in the world for Cooper Cup. Anyone in the world. He was the number one quarter the number one wide receiver just looks unbelievably outstanding. Then Goff has his implosion and now it's like, "Oh no. This is the same guy, the same offense. The the emotional roller coaster you can't stay you don't want to be on that emotional roller coaster. Yeah. You get off and you watch everyone else on that. And that's what you're talking about because the last two weeks, Chris Godwin's been the wide receiver six both weeks, while Keenan Allen's been the wide receiver 64. Oh, got and him. And 59. <laughs> All right, Jason, let's get into our Thursday night preview. Thursday night breakdown. We got the Chiefs. We got the Broncos. We've got a 49-point over under. The Chiefs are favored by three and a half, so the Broncos are home dogs, home diggity dogs. You know, you you guessed that line. We were talking about the lines yesterday. I was surprised um, that the line was this small for the Chiefs. Chiefs lost two in a row. Broncos won two in a row. Right, and, and while the Chiefs have lost those games, a, a few things have been exposed. One, you don't have a, as mobile of a Pat Mahomes because of the ankle issue at the same exact time that you've lost a really important piece on your offensive line. And then on the defensive side, teams have realized, especially without Chris Jones, in fact, Al Borland, can you look up Chris Jones and see if he's expected to play this week? I'm guessing because of the short week, they might not have him play. Don't look up his combine. Do oh, 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 Chris Jones legendary <laughs> combine forty run? Uh, I don't look. If you want to look up his forty time, don't worry about it. But if you want to watch his forty, you, you do you. Um, yes, Chris Jones is is a is a special talent. We'll we'll say that. Um, so, but if he's out, yeah, more of a man than I. <laughs> yeah, uh, if he is out then that means that you can run on the Kansas City Chiefs with great ease, which slows the clock down or speeds the clock up, whichever right. way you're looking at it from. And so, yeah, this is this is why the line is – Did you just say smaller? it slows it down or speeds it up depending on how you've, yeah. you're looking at it? Yes. I mean, obviously the clock is going to be the same speed. How do, at which perspective is it slowing down? Okay, so when, you, when people talk about slowing the game down – making fewer offensive actual plays happening, that's when, right? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, know, I know what you're saying, but how does that make the clock slower? Well, neither makes the clock change the speed, but my is point is... Is there a black hole that has approached the earth and we are altering is, the time-space continuum? This is a common phrase. This is not... I'm not inventing this here. You're slowing the game down, keeping the other team off the field, okay. trying to have more time of possession by... by slowing the pace of play so that's what you're saying you're slowing the pace of play i However, do not believe that's slowing the clock down though but that, that's my point <sighs> i stand by it i stand by it all right oh, i apologize. support go ahead. me go ahead uh not expected to play is is the most recent update i can find. okay well this is why look i know i'm a day early here but philip Lindsay is my start of the week all right um i dig it man i'm fine it's also starting royce freeman if, if, yes. I mean, with Chris Jones out and what you've seen teams succeed with against Kansas City Chiefs, which is both necessary and easy, is running the ball. And, and Denver's been running the ball fantastically. So maybe this is why the Vegas line is so low, is there's a recipe to at least compete yes. with the Chiefs. Yeah, Philip Lindsay is averaging over 18 opportunities per game. That is rushing attempts combined with targets. Meanwhile, his counterpoint... Point. counterpart Royce Freeman is averaging 70 plus yards from scrimmage per game what but no touchdowns for Royce Freeman that is an absolute positive regression sign there for Royce very possible he gets into the end zone on the other side of the ball for the running back position what happened what happened, what happened? Damian Williams too er early in the game er super early touchdown Oh my goodness! He's yeah. gonna have a monster game. He didn't touch the. It wasn't two touches. Shady McCoy led the backfield with fifty percent of the snaps and ten touches last week. Do you have 
the the courage to start either of these players. I I, I really don't. Or are you, you just backed into a corner and clicking them in and not looking? I, I don't have the courage to start them necessarily. I, I might have the roster that needs to start them, but this is a this is a team in a backfield where you can't figure it out right now. Is it Shady's? Is it D Will's? Is D Will getting the rushing work and Shady the passing work or vice versa. And Daryl Williams is still getting past Daryl Daryl Williams was involved early in the game. This wasn't a late, you know, change of pace thing. So all three running backs are somewhat involved now. And it's hard to predict. And this isn't a matchup that looks great for the running back. Um, while it did in the very beginning of the year, Vic Fangio's system has gotten it together. Uh, Denver plays Great ball at home. It's a great stadium. Great crowd there. So, yeah, I'm not excited about any of these running backs. They are flex options if you are in need. And, of course, whenever you flex in a chief, you do have a ceiling. So, Royce Freeman, oh, that's backup a- running back, or Damian Williams, perceived starting running back. Wow. I feel like I would rather have the consi- – because this is most likely my flex spot, and and even though I'm saying that, because it's Thursday night football, you're going to take them out of your flex. I'm just referring to like my third running back on a roster. I think I would rather have the consistency of Royce Freeman, as gross as that seems, because I think what you're talking about with the touchdown positive regression coming, this is a perfect matchup for that. And what we've seen is that the bigger bruising type of back, um, Marlon Mack plays with that bruising style, um, you know, not the Philip Lindsay cut uh, through. They, they it, Carlos Hyde has right. had great success against this Chiefs team. So I think I think Royce has a good game, and I'm fearful of Damian Williams. But if you are going up against a high level opponent and you need a ceiling play, I still think the ceiling is on the Chiefs side. At the wide receiver position, Tyreek Hill is back. He only played on 50 percent of the snaps. That's all it took for Tyreek Hill to establish fantasy dominance again. Sammy Watkins, can he retake the Lizard King throne? It's He's been stolen. He ain't playing. It's the Lazard King. Get out of here. Oh! Oh! oh um, yes, uh, I, I don't, I don't oh. think... Oh! Oh, we... Well, we just... Some very interesting... I mean... I want a, I want the button. You, you want the button? I have... Well, I have to find the button. Well... Breaking news. Saquon Barkley and Evan Engram were full participants today. I think they're going to play then. If they are full on a Wednesday, they're playing on Sunday. They're playing the Cardinals. If you have Barkley, maybe you traded for him low. Congratulations. Pat, pat yourself on the back because both of these players are about to have a day. Back to the Chiefs-Broncos game. So Sammy Watkins, like, yeah, one one is he even playing? I don't believe he plays. It's a short week. Okay, so Sammy Watkins doesn't play. Demarcus Robinson, McCole Hardman, Byron Pringle. Are you interested in any of these players? Patrick Mahomes is averaging nearly 300 yards per game, but the touchdown regression has punched him in the face. Yeah, I mean, he's – it's it's insane when you think, like, he's not the number one quarterback or the number two quarterback. Goodness. Or the number three quarterback. Or the number four. Co- Wait, Pat, what? Right now, Pat what Mahomes, is he on the season? He's quarterback five behind Matt Ryan, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, and Lamar Jackson. Wow. And you know, after the first three weeks, you, p- people were trading the world for him. I know, I know, I know a guy <laughs> who traded <laughs> close to a draft class oh, for him right at that moment. What an idiot! Along with Kyler Murray. Uh, oh, that feels bad. His name is Andy Holloway. It's Andy. <laughs> this is why he's on vacation. He let, he's like, I can't handle this. I've got to. I've got to have a week for myself. But regarding the other pass catching op- options for Kansas City, they are identical to the running back situation, where it's a very low floor, a very high ceiling. Okay. Um. You know, if you needed to start, yeah, pick one. If I needed to start one, I would start. I think I would start Demarcus Robinson. He with, had the goose. He, yes, he had I a mean, near touchdown, but he had the goose. It's one of those things where I'm just trying to follow snaps and when Tyreek Hill gets in. I mean, if, if Sammy is out, I think both of them are going to be on the field about the same. And if they're both on the field about the same, DeMarcus is 
the veteran McColl is faster. Sure. Not not to say not by that. much. Yeah, De- Demarcus is blazing as well. I mean, it's it's a coin flip. There's no uh, there's no uh, analysis here that has a crystal ball that can say, yeah, the deep ball's going to Demarcus or going to McCole Hardman. Okay, on the other side, Cortland Sutton. What does this guy need to do to get respect from the fantasy community? At least seven targets every game. Seventh among wide receivers in receiving yards. He's averaging nearly 80 yards a game. Cortland Sutton is doing what he was drafted to do. Second round draft pick just last year. Who should have been a first round. Like who I, I'm He I'm, could have absolutely could have been a first round pick. The Joe Flacco effect was real amongst us fantasy players projecting Cortland Sutton. But you gotta throw that draft analysis out at this point. We're six weeks in. Cortland Sutton is establishing dominance. Cortland Sutton in a half point PPR league is a wide receiver one. He is the wide receiver eleven. This matchup is great against Kansas City. You have to play him. He is up near the league lead in uh, percentage market share of air yards. Flacco is airing the ball out to Cortland Sutton, and he's doing that because Cortland Sutton is a great wide receiver. and And the thing is, is he's only going to get better. Cortland, you know what I mean, like. You, you level up coming into year two, and that doesn't mean you're done yet. You know, as sure. the season goes on, he's learning new things. He's becoming a better NFL wide receiver. So, Cortland Sutton is a absolute must play this week. And where are you at with Wolverine's long-lost brother, Emmanuel Sanders? He only had the one catch for zero yards last week because he got hurt. Had a really hot start, but has fallen off since then. Are you playing... Emmanuel Sanders. Back to back, really, really poor games. But again, like you said, he was he was a little hurt. Um, the Chiefs are tenth against fantasy wide receivers. Which, That's the one spot that they seems, aren't giving up points, which seems impossible. Seems crazy because they're because quarterbacks are monstrous against Kansas City. But if you look at that, you know, like Deshaun Watson had two rushing touchdowns. No quarterback benefited from those plays. But I think the truth is they they give up a lot of points, and eventually that's going to come through the wide receiver. I am fine starting Emmanuel Sanders. I think he's a good start this week, despite the the last two weeks uh, having poor performances. If you look at – it's really funny. You look at um, air yards and the team market share, uh, players who have a high market share. I just said Cortland Sutton is up near the, you know, the, the, the better players in the league – at team market share of air yards, so is Emmanuel Sanders on sure. the same team because that there is no third wide receiver, and I love those situations. That's where you get a Thielen and a Diggs. That's where back in the day you'd get a Brandon Marshall and an Eric Decker. So yeah, I, th- I think you can start both guys in this matchup. Travis Kelsey, eight targets a game, eighty-two receiving yards per game. He is in for you. Noah Fant played sixty-eight percent of the snaps this season. He is running a lot of routes, is but it just has not happened at all for Noah Fant. Noah Fantastic, as we want to call him, 16 yards last week against Tennessee. Are are you playing him in a plus matchup? Chiefs 27th against fantasy tight ends. I it or is I should a, say, are you like are you streaming him? Uh, I hope I hope not. Okay. I think he's more Noah Phantom, and he's a ghost out there. Um, nicely done. Thank you. How long you been sitting on that one? About ten seconds. <laughs> About ten seconds. When I was really happy when I thought of that one. Um, but yeah, no, I, I look. I totally get it. You could say trust the process. He's out there. He's getting snaps. He's running routes. The matchup is great, but he hasn't gotten it done. And I don't want to be chasing the hope of getting his first big game. All right. I, you know, rookie tight ends. They take a while for a reason, and so, you know, Fant looks good for the future, but no. Update on practice reports. Amari Cooper did not practice. It's only Wednesday, but I have severe doubts that Amari Cooper is going to suit up this weekend. The trusted sources that I believe in expect this to be a multiple-week injury, which means, obviously, I, I don't think there's a chance he plays this week, but he could shock the world. Devin Singletary, however, oh. practicing in full. He's I, a sneaky I think start. You can, I think you can still buy low on Devin Singletary. Yes. For, and- for this run, Singletary was being involved in the passing game. They just they were extra cautious with the hamstring injury. I think 
he could have played two weeks ago, but they had the bye week coming, and they just wanted to get the rookie the extra rest, which was the right move. Devin Singletary, I'm, He's a, such I'm a, very interested. Such a sneaky start this week. Against Miami? It's against Miami. They're going to be up. They're going to run the ball. They're going to have success wherever they want to. Devin Singletary looked so good before going down. The schedule we've talked about opens up is brilliant. I would I would definitely try to scoop him up in a league. If I can if I can trade, you know, a mediocre piece, you know, like sure. here's a perfect example. Emmanuel Sanders, a vet, had a good start to the year, has a plus matchup. I would trade Emmanuel Sanders for Devin Singletary. All right. Um that's that's what I would do. That'll do it for today's show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Tomorrow we get into those matchups. We get into those starts of the week. Make sure you check out BookLandGiveaway.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on JoinTheFoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.